Welcome and thank you for joining us for this webinar presentation. We are the Cybersecurity and Information Systems Information Analysis Center, or CSIAC, one of three IAC domains in the DoD Information Analysis Centers operating under the Defense Technical Information Center, DTIC, within the Office of the Undersecretary of Defense for Research and Engineering. Our informative webinar series highlights current and emerging research and technology developments. It presents an opportunity for accelerating the DOD's leverage of these advancements by increasing awareness and fostering technical collaboration. CSIAC serves as one of the premier information research partners and curators of technology advancements and trends for the cybersecurity and information systems community. As such, our organization supports those working in the cybersecurity and information systems domain of DOD research and engineering. We do so by helping navigate the vast landscape of scientific and technical information, allowing our customers to get a head start on their technical projects. With an understanding of the cybersecurity and information systems DOD research and engineering landscape, we provide research and analysis services. We help unlock access to information, knowledge, and best practices from government, industry, and academia to stimulate innovation, foster collaboration, and eliminate redundancy. We hope you enjoy this webinar presentation and that it serves as a catalyst for community collaboration and improved DoD cybersecurity and information systems research. All right. Well, good morning, good afternoon, uh, good evening to everybody who's joined us. Uh, my name is Brian Benish. I, uh, I serve as a, a deputy director here with the, the DOD Information Analysis Centers uh, representing CSI today, and I'm pleased for all of you to, to be joining uh, us for the CSI webinar. Uh, we have Ms. Singy with us to be presenting uh, from OUSD, so if she's bringing up the slides. I'm going to go ahead and do a quick introduction um, and Maybe just before that, give you an overview of, of how we're going to uh, conduct this webinar. Um, first, in terms of uh, overview of how we're going to conduct the webinar, um, Singy will, will present the slides. Um, if you have any questions or comments um, or issues at all during the webinar presentation, you can enter them to the chat um, and, and I'll be able to, to chat with you and um, hopefully solve some problems there. Um, rest assured that this webinar presentation is being recorded. And so we'll be able to get the, the recording available to you. If you um, have any issues where you, you can't hear or see, you can at least be able to watch it after the fact. Um, we normally do a Q&A session for these webinars, but we're going to hold on that today um, just due to the nature of the material. Um, it's preferable to not have to um, navigate and respond to some questions that uh, might not be suitable for a public environment like this. So um, instead, if you could just hold any questions you have uh, at the end of the, the presentation, you'll see some contact information and you can direct any questions you have uh, to those those contacts um, as opposed to putting them in the Q&A. So I uh, apologize for that inconvenience, but again, just to do the difference, uh, the nature of the information for this presentation, it would be uh, better to just direct those via email that you'll see at the end of the presentation. Um, and so uh, with that out of the way, um, introduction. So. Ms. Uh, Singy De Silva will be presenting on behalf of the System Security Policy Standards and Guidance in the Office of the Undersecretary of Defense for Research and Engineering, Office of Science and Technology in the program in program protection, where she serves as a support contractor for Mr. Burhan Adam. Uh, Mr. Adam, it, he oversees the technology and program protection, the technical information, cyber resilient weapon systems, and the system security engineering policy, guidance, standards, education, and training. Uh, he's, he establishes the policy and the guidance to develop and transition engineering or transition technology and program protection planning tools and methods and procedures. Um, and again, though, contract as contractor support, uh, Mr. Silva supports the advancement of cyber resilient weapon systems and system security engineering. She has an extensive experience supporting the U.S. Department of Navy as a software engineer and cybersecurity engineer to include the Program Executive Office for Integrated Weapon Systems, PEO Ships, Office of the Chief of Naval Operations, and Assistant Secretary of the Navy for Research, Development, and Acquisition. She's also supported uh, NASA headquarters as a programmer and analyst, 
and she holds a BS in Computer Science from Slippery Rock University and MS in Computer Science from John Hopkins University with a Software Engineering concentration. And so we are pleased and thankful to have uh, Singy here to present. And so Singy, I will go ahead and mute myself and hand the mic over to you. All right. Um, thank you uh, so much for the introduction. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Um, so uh, in this presentation, I plan to brief you on the fundamentals of cross-domain solutions, introduce the NSA's uh, National Cross-Domain uh, Strategy and Management Office and CDSMO, and uh, key governing policies and key considerations for acquiring and deploying a CDS. Uh, and also uh, where to start if you have a need for a cross-domain solution in support of the DOD mission. Um, so uh, here's the outline of what we will discuss in this presentation today. Uh, first, I will introduce my organization, OUSD r &E, and address our role in developing um, uh, training to meet the DOD policy requirements as defined in DOD I. 5000.83. This instruction talks about uh, secure cyber resilient engineering, which we call SCREE. Uh, then I will briefly discuss the key governing policies along with the key officers that you need to contact. Um, and then um, <clears throat> we will move on to some cross domain solution definitions and terminologies. Uh, then at a high level, we will discuss the acquisition process and the choices you must make when whether to buy an approved solution versus modify or customize a COTS God's product to meet your needs. If you need to build your own CDS from scratch. So those are kind of the three options. We will discuss that in detail. Then I'll explain the uh, required testing process uh, and the connection process for a CDS. Uh, we will touch base on the CDS uh, maintenance lifecycle challenges and risks. And then finally, uh, I'll share our point of contacts um, and uh, we'll move on from there. So uh, this is the bit of an eye chart, but uh, this is our organization charge for the Office of the Under Secretary of Defense for Research and Engineering. Um, this office is commonly known as the Chief Technology Officer uh, for the DOD. The green box in this chart shows where my organization fits in the CTO. System security is one of the two organizations under SNT program. Uh, as the chart indicates, CP falls under the deputy CTO for uh, science and technology. I support the director of uh, uh, policy standards and guidance, which falls under our director of uh, system security. Um, the mission of the SNT program protection is to protect technology advantage and counter unwanted technology transfer to ensure warfighter dominance through superior, assured, secure, and resilient systems. Um, so now we will talk a little bit about the key policies that we manage. Um, so the DoD I 5000.83 technology and program protection to maintain technology technology advantage was published in July 2020. Uh, we updated it on um, May 21st, uh, 2021, and it is available online through the Washington Headquarters Services website. This policy directs um, to ensure of re uh, resiliency in weapon systems by applying secure cyber resilient engineering into how we design develop and deploy weapon systems within a contested cyberspace and um, the protection of cons uh, concerns associated with the computational communication and physical characteristics of a system. cross domain solutions are combined software and hardware information assurance systems designed to protect the exchange of or the access of information across a domain barrier. We consider cross domain solutions and encryption among key measures and design uh, solutions that significantly contribute to the cyber resiliency of weapon systems or cyber physical systems. Uh, so to that end, uh, per this instruction, we are providing this presentation to meet the policy where the warfighting community uses validated cybersecurity solutions, products and services, particularly when there is a need for cross-domain solutions. <clears throat> 
so we'll move on to the next slide uh, about this is the problem statement. Um, so complex interconnected system of systems is now universal in the modern global information environment, including war fighting domains. Additionally, threat is getting more sophisticated. At the same time, technology is getting better in solving more problems. However, it's complexity is increasing. Although CDS uh, and supporting technologies have been around for a long time, because of the reason we just talked about, the need for CDS is increasingly becoming more critical for the warfighter. Implementing secure uh, connectivity between system of, uh, systems of different sensitivity, trust or security classification is con a cornerstone of successful secure information sharing for the DOD in mission, um, in coalition missions, uh, environments. It is critical for the warfighter to expand information sharing capabilities without introducing uh, security vulnerabilities to their most sensitive systems and data information. However, program managers, uh, program management officers face difficulty with how to efficiently and uh, effectively acquire and deploy a CDS in a weapon system. According to NSA's National uh, Cross-Domain Solution, Cross-Domain Strategy and Management Office and CDSMO, who oversees cross-domain activities across the DOD and intelligence community has indicated PMO often faces challenges with optimized CDSs, uh, which could be costly in the uh, long term. <clears throat> Uh, it is difficult to define the need for a cross domain solution before building one. So often uh, cannot decide if they need a software or a hardware solution ba based solution. So frequently overlook uh, cost uh, sustainment costs and complexity in terms of security and reliability and what is needed to defend it. So in partnership with NSA, we are addressing this problem. Uh, another point I want to make here is that um, uh, the complexity has increased with the JADC2, uh, which is the concept of uh, for the Department of Defense has developed for uh, connect sensors from all branches of the armed forces into a united network powered by artificial intelligence. These branches include, of course, the United States Navy, Marine Corps, Army, Air Force, and Space Forces, each military Branch, branch has its own initiative that contributes to the JADC2. Um, so that's it. The main purpose of this presentation and future ones is to increase awareness. And there are resources available to you to help you should you have the need for cross-domain solutions to integrate into your respective systems. All right. So now we will um, have a look at these uh, key policies uh, that I've listed here. Um, so this is, these are the policies that are governing the CDS uh, concept. It is uh, very important that uh, the, the PMO follows the, uh, these governing policies and acquisition, acquisition process for the CDS. Um, uh, given the time allocated for this webinar, I will not go into each of these policies at this time, but you will have access to this slide deck so, so you can have a look at that. But the bottom line is the DOD and the national level agencies and any foreign systems that connect to any US systems must comply with the policies indicated on this slide. They are our key governing policies. Uh, there are several additional uh, documents that I would like to share with you later in the presentation. Um, so I, I want to introduce the NCDSMO, which, who is the overall responsibility for CDS at the national level. Um, NCDSMO oversees cross-domain activities across the DOD and the IC, ensuring a common approach. This is a very important organization you need to be aware of and know how to contact them when you have a need for a CDS. Uh, the NCDSMO operates on the NSA National Security Directive 42 and NSM 8 uh, clarifies the authorities of the director of the NSA as the national manager and designated NCDSMO. This office develops guidance and technologies to improve the security and capabilities of CDS. Furthermore, the DOD CIO has designated the NCDSMO to be the office of primary responsibility for cross-domain solutions in the DOD. Um, <clears throat> Uh, this office um, also develops and maintains community outreach programs and forums. Additionally, they develop, maintain, 
test the security uh, requirements for CDS by uh, used by the United States government and for foreign military sales programs and operate across the uh, threat intelligence activity to research and disseminate threat to CDS. Uh, earlier, we reviewed the key governing policies. So next, we will look into some of the NSS policies and documents governing uh, CDS. Okay, so um, these are a handful of um, uh, policies that the NSA has put out. Um, so um, these uh, NCDSMO developed these fundamental policies and documents that are available on the NCDSMO portal uh, that is mentioned um, at the bottom uh, to give you a better understanding of their requirements and processes. I recommend anyone interested in learning the details of CDS to review these documents from the portal. Um, of note, uh, raise the bar is the NCDSMO security requirements for the design, development, assessment, and deployment of CDS to improve the security and capabilities for the protection of um, national security systems. This is a critical document that provides the nuts and bolts for CDS acquisition and integration. Uh, we'll next talk a little bit more about um, raise the bra bar strategy. Um, so this strategy establishes architecture and implementation requirements for the development of CDS. The fundamental premises behind this document is that the implementing security controls is not sufficient to make a CDS safe to operate or to perform its core function adequately. While the primary objective of this uh, strategy is to ensure the U.S. government has secure and resilient CDS. Its secondary objective is to enable the development of CDS that can be quickly and securely enhanced with new capabilities and features. I mentioned the uh, NSD42 and the NSM8 policies two slides ago. Under these two directives, all cross-domain solutions developed for the use of uh, United States government, um, national security information and national security systems are required to implement this requirements described in this document. Uh, this strategy also applies to all CDSs uh, uh, designed to support foreign mil military sales. Uh, CDS used in foreign military sales are intended to protect the exchange of information between classified and sensitive U.S. sensors and weapons weapon systems which have been developed for the uh, US for the United States government but sold to foreign partners and used in foreign partners other classified or unclassified networks so these requirements apply to such systems as well compliance with this requirements document is required for CDSs to be listed on the NCDSMO United States government and FMS uh, CDS baseline list uh, so we'll move on to the corresponding offices at the component level um, uh, there are mirroring offices that you should know about the cross domain solution uh, support office and the element acts as the primary liaison between the combatant command services agencies and the NCDSMO. They coordinate with the NCDSMO on any CDS development activities to include modifications to an existing system and uh, develop uh, development of a new system. If you think you need a CDS, this is the first point of contact for you. A list of CDSs and CDSOs and CDSEs are available in the NCDSMO portal and how to establish register and uh, CDSO and E is also, and its responsibilities are mentioned in detail in the CDSE 101 guidance and requirements document. Um, and here are some of the responsibilities of a CDSO, CDSE to include coordinating the agency's cross-domain security control assessment, uh, author authorization of activities and deployment. Uh, it's important to remember you should contact them first uh, and also the NSS and CDSMO uh, for guidance before you start procuring or designing a CDS. We'll move on to the second part of the brief um, about the terminology and definitions. Uh, this is an important question in understanding the basic concepts uh, regarding cross-domain solutions. This is the official definition from CNSSI 4009 on what a secure domain is. Uh, secure domain is a collection of uh, resources. So networks, servers, work, uh, workstations, data, facili data facilities, um, people and processes that are subject to, to a 
security policy enforcement uh, enforced by a single authority. Security domains are uh, identified by their security marking, which is a combination of the classif uh, classification level in any uh, stated releasabilities, dissemination controls, compartments, special access programs, and some handling caveats. In the United States government, the list of classifications are unclassified, confidential, secret, and top secret. Uh, here I've listed a, uh, some examples. Networks with different classification levels are considered different secure domains, such as Nippernet, Sepernet, JVIX. Another example of secure domain is the controller, um, the CAN bus in a vehicle, uh, which is a message-based protocol uh, designed to allow uh, electronic control units found in today's automobiles, as well as other devices to communicate with each with other uh, with each other in a reliable priority driven fashion um we'll move on to uh, so what is a cds uh, and we'll talk a little bit more about why a cds is used <clears throat> um cross domain solutions are a mechanism to access or transfer information between two or more networks of difficult uh, security classifications um this is the definition of a cross domain solution by NIST, which is inherited by the Committee uh, on the National Security uh, System, CNSS. In a nutshell, it is a control interface that is a set of mechanisms used to enforce security policies and control the flow of information between interconnected systems. Uh, examples of control inf interfaces are routers, firewalls, cross domain solutions, and application gateways such as email gateways, web proxies. These technologies can be used alone or in combination for a protection of connections between security domains. Understanding information sharing requirements and recognizing the need for a CDS early in the design process is essential for ensuring success when implementing a new system or adding connections to an existing system. If data is crossing a classification or releasability domain boundary, the DODI 8540.01, which describes the cross-domain policy, requires the use of a cross-domain technology. So, so given that, here are some of the specific reasons why uh, a CDA should be used. Uh, cross-domain solutions uh, allow the transfer of data uh, between different systems, operating in different secure domains. It reduces accidental re release of information from classified networks and increased information sharing. In addition, it reduces data spills, malware infection, data exfiltration that could occur from using removable media to transfer data, which I talked about earlier in the manual data transfer. Um, one of the examples of CDS used uh, use a large enterprise data center like the DOD does. They have many different networks and security enclaves with different classifications and releasability requirements where secure, secure information sharing is enabled by CDS technology. For coalition missions, uh, warfighters need to share certain information with the coalition partners. Tactical systems are connected to other systems and ground systems and require a CDS to allow access to that data in a need to know basis. Um, as an example, think about how medical records can be available in an operational environment. Uh, let's say a warfighter is injured um, in the battlefield and needs to be evacuated to a foreign partner me medical facility. A doctor will need access to the injured U.S. soldier medical record, soldier's medical record prior to treating the person. The doctor will need to know if the injured indi individual has a penicillin allergy or has uh, metal in his body before conducting an MRI as an example. A cross-domain solution can be used to share selected information for a period of time to facilitate this challenge. Um, so uh, next we'll move on to um, the different types of cross-domain solutions. So there are three types of cross-domain solutions, uh, cross-domain functions that I want to go over with you here today. Access solution, um, is, uh, this, uh, describes a user's ability to view and manipulate information uh, from domains of different security levels and caveats. This is not referring to user access control. They are uh, heavily used in operational uh, <clears throat> environments where users need access to multiple networks from a single desktop. In theory, the ideal solution is separation 
requirements between domains by preventing overlap of data between domains, which ensure data if, is of different classific, uh, classification, not leaking between networks at a host layer of the OSI TCP model. Here, uh, here I'm referring to data spills. As an example, an operations planner in an operational cell of a command manages or monitors multiple networks with different security classifications that are physically and logically separated. Cross-domain solutions help virtualize all these networks and allow the display of, le of uh, all, in all level of information on a single pane of glass via VDI while maintaining secure rules and caveats without spillage. In practice, however, data spills are an ever-present concern that system designers attempt to mitigate uh, within acceptable risk levels. For this reason, data transfer is addressed as a separate CDS. Uh, transfer CDS simply offers the ability to move data between secure domains that are of different classification level or different caveat of the same classification level. Transfer solutions must be evaluated to ensure the guard is capable of re uh, respecting all con uh, constrictions of the various domains that require protection. Transfer CDS make up the largest number of unique CDS products. They are critical to the operation of the United States government weapons and uh, C4I systems. Uh, usage examples uh, are human-to-human -human transfer of information, which could be an email from a person uh, to a machine, uh, to a person's nipper to another person's zipper. Machine-to-machine -machine transfer example is uh, an individual sending a message to a sensor. Machine-to-machine -machine transfer of information could be a radar system sending a message to a weapon system. And finally, we have the multi level solution um, security uh, domain. So um, this type is the access and transfer solutions rely on multiple security levels uh, approaches that maintain the separation of domains. This architecture is considered multiple single levels. A multi-level solution differs from MSL uh, architecture by st uh, storing all data in a single domain. It allows the com uh, compartmentalized data in within a database. An example is the one I talked about earlier of the doctor to see only the medical records of his patient or sharing the medical records of a patient with uh, only authorized in individuals. The multi-level solution uses trusted labeling and integrated mandatory, mandatory access control schema as a base to uh, mediate data flow and access according to user credentials and clearance in accordance to the authenticate read and write privileges. This is, in this manner, the MLS is considered an all-in-one CDS encompassing both access and data transfer capabilities. Um, so next I'll move on to um, wh where, which, you know, the applicable environments of a CDS. Um, there's a strong push by the DOD CIO's office to move point-to-point -point, uh, CDS to enterprise cross-domain services uh, service providers, such as Amazon, uh, Microsoft, DESA, DIA. This is being done to improve monitoring security and reduce sustainment issues to ensure CDS are in, uh, using the latest and most secure capabilities. Point-to-point -point CDSs are generally only authorized if they're uh, specific technical or operational issues that prohibit use of enterprise devices. Uh, the network, um, the network um, uh, CDSs is connected to or physically private to the entity operating the CDS. Tactical CDSs is a small form factor um, that is used to support combat operations or forward deployment C4I assets. Uh, they're found in uh, aircrafts, tanks, ships, UAVs, and some are even uh, human portable. Most of these devices are custom made. Uh, so next portion of the brief, we will discuss how to uh, determine if you need a CDS, challenges of CDS acquisition, uh, and uh, processes that will help you work out a roadmap with your CDSO, CDSE, 
um, uh, for your CDS needs. Okay, so um, here are some considerations to think about when evaluating your CDS needs. Earlier we covered what a secure domain is. So uh, does your system need to transfer data between different secure domains? Or does your system operate at different security levels? How about um, the need to combine data from multiple sources at different levels into a single system for, syst uh, for analysis and virtualization? Another need may be to access a lower level secure domain from a higher level security domain. There are some other things you need to think about. These are some of the things you need to think about. Uh, one of the needs for a CDS is defined, identified, even if tentatively, you must first uh, contact your service agency, CDSO, CDSE, and then CDSMO. Getting them involved early in the process has many benefits. So the NCDSMO has a national level view of the CDSs used by the United States government, and the NCDSMO has access to uh, CDS is being developed for our 5i partners um, by coordinating development with the NCDSMO who can provide technical advice and how to proceed and also notify the agency if similar development is taking place in the community. Um, additionally, the NCDSMO can participate in security design reviews to help ensure the new capability capabilities will meet current and emerging security requirements. This will bring cost savings uh, down the road. Uh, next step is to conduct uh, a requirements analysis. Um, NCD SMO has a questionnaire that may be helpful for your organization to gather information uh, with regards to functional and secure requirements of your future CDS. Think secure domains, number of connections, user population, uh, data types, data flows, performance, um, availability, and design and operation constraints to, a, to name a few. Uh, like any other acquisition process, uh, effort, um, then you uh, then your organization needs to conduct a analysis of alternatives. This process will evaluate your CDS requirements to set of candidate solutions such as approaches and solutions to de determine an optimal course of action. The goal of the exercise is to maximize capacity, minimize mission, and minimize org organizational risk and um, minimize cost and schedule impact. Um, this includes the buy versus modify versus uh, build determination or change, uh, changing your system to eliminate the need of a CDS. NCDSMO maintains a set of uh, CDS baselines that has been approved for op operations. It's critical you consider these lists on their portal for existing solutions that can be reused. <clears throat> um, Next step is the selection and procurement of a CDS. Uh, considerations will be uh, will include existing enterprise CDS that can be configured or modified to meet your needs or leverage other operational CDS or development of a new CDS. We will discuss more about the buy versus modify versus build process in a little bit. An authorization process will be followed by, obtain, by obtaining approval for your CDS as a part of a system or an enclave. The DISA uh, DISN connection process guide version 6.1 appendix G explains the DOD's cross-domain solution authorization process. This includes requesting authorization to deploy, install, and accreditation of the testing. And finally, we will discuss managing, monitoring, and maintaining your CDS. So to talk a little bit more about our options, um, for DOD implementations, the DOD I-8541, uh, 40.01 cross-domain policy states that the DOD will employ existing enterprise cross-domain service providers, enterprise CD service, or enterprise hosted CDSs when their use satisfies the, the cross-domain mission and uh, uh, requirements of the DOD components. If the use of existing enterprise cross-domain service providers will not support your validated mission requirements, then policy dictates that 
use of CDS technologies on the NCDSMO managed CDS baseline list will be talked about earlier. As mentioned before, there are three options consider, uh, considered in the order of preference, buy versus modify versus build. Option one, if a cross-domain solution technology on the NCDSMO managed baseline meets all your system cross-domain requirements, such an, as an example, supports the required protocols, applications, data types, filtering capabilities, and system functional and performance requirements um, uh, in terms from a, a size, weight, power, throughput, latency, availability, and management, then buying a baseline technology is the preferred approach. <clears throat> there is still effort required to uh, procure, integrate, test, and authorize the CDS, but this option offers cross-domain capability with reasonable expenditure of time and resources. There are many guts and cuts options for CDS technology on the NCDSMO CDS baseline, most likely one already exists that can be used out of the box with few um, with new rule sets and schemas. So the next option is buy and then modify. If there is a CDS baseline technology that meets most, but not all your system requirements, then buying and modifying a baseline CDS should be considered. In this case, modification to add capability is a reasonable course of action and is preferred to development of a new CDS. Added capability could be to support the additional data types, a unique protocol, a new application, improved performance, uh, higher availability, custom filtering or changes to the form factor um, of uh, form factor needs uh, of your system. This option will have more cost and schedule impact than option one because of the resources required to develop, test, and authorize the modified capabilities. However, it is still generally much cheaper and faster uh, with lower technical and security risk and impact to schedule to find modifications, uh, to fund modifications to an existing CDS than to start developing uh, of a new one. Um, so the, the final option um, you, you have is to, is to build uh, build your uh, CDS from scratch. <clears throat> the development of a new uh, CDS should be considered only if option one and two are not possible and only with significant evidence that the development of a new brand new CDS capability is the only available course of action. Such a, such a choice is a last resort since it will incur significant cost, schedule impact, increased risk and require extensive resource to achieve. For example, development, program uh, a development program can expect building a new cds to take at least two to five years and cost in the millions and of dollars it is not uncommon for a new cds to cost five to ten million dollars for uh, development at alone pursuing this option also has high technical security programmatic and schedule risk cds development requires specific skills and experiences any changes to a cds must go through the ncdsmo lbsa process which we will talk about later in addition to development a uh, program can expect uh, testing costs in the millions of dollars for lab based testing integration into any weapon system sensors if applicable um, weapon systems, C4I interoperability testing, and no flight vehicle safety testing. Interoperability testing is usually performed by the Joint Interoperability Test Command. Uh, so these are all the things you'll have to consider, um, uh, you know, during the test cycle. Uh, next, I'd like to go over the lab-based security assessment process, um, which is a a test event verifies that implementation and strength of the cross-domain solution technology, as well as the effect effectiveness of the filtering architecture and mechanisms. This testing is conducted in the NCDSMO authorized lab in a standalone or isolated domain and includes uh, penetration testing, adversarial elimination testing. This is a coordinated. Um, this is a coordinated event with event with the NCDSMO by the CDSO and the CDSE. There are five phases to the LBSA process as shown in this flowchart. Um, the document um, security assessment of cross-domain solutions process and requirements on the NCDSMO portal has more details on each subtask to include roles and responsibilities, requirements uh, that need to be met 
to complete this process. <clears throat> In general, the scope of testing required for a CDS is largely based on whether the system to be tested is new or the extent of the changes made since it was last tested. It may also be affected by whether the previous LBSA was uh, based on security controls rather than R RTB requirements. Um, NCDSMO uses a versioning and patching requirements for a cross-domain solution document that is a guide to determining the type of uh, type and the extent of the testing required uh, and the RTB document uh, requirements document as the basis for the testing requirements. Uh, the type of LBSA required is usually determined during the security design review with the CDS developer by NCDSMO in coordination with the lab and the C. Did you did I lose uh, audio? Can you hear me? Good to go. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, can you hear me? Yep. Good to go. Okay. Sorry, I must have uh, lost audio for a little bit. Um, how long ago was that? About two minutes, one minute, maybe somewhere in there. Okay, so I'll start with the uh, the different types of um, um, <clears throat> testing. Is that good? Sounds right. All right. So, um, uh, additional to the LBSS uh, secret system uh, assessment, there are several other types of testing listed here. Um, so, um, full lab based testing. Uh, is required for a new CDS that have never been tested and a CDS that have had significant changes must uh, undergo this LBSA. Uh, this is performed at a certified NCDSMO lab, needs about six to uh, nine months to complete. Um, and the timeline does not include the preparation and the documentation required uh, re re reviews to support the security test planning review and start of the actual LBSA testing uh, could be longer due to complexity and um, the uniqueness of the situation. So um, um, the next one is the Delta LBSA testing, for, which focuses on verifying that changes to a previously authorized version of a CDS have not negatively affected CDS security mechanisms or functionality, and that the CDS is still secure and working as intended. Uh, the changes to a CDS usually include the addition of new functionality, like um, uh, new filters, uh, new protocol adapters, um, this could take one to three months in a NCDSMO certified lab um, and depends on the scope of the changes, uh, how long it will take otherwise. Um, the next one is the regression lab testing, which examines specific components of a CDS that we that were found to be uh, deficient during either full LBSA um, and, uh, and Delta LBSA or M MPCT, which must be corrected before a device will be approved for deployment. NCDSMO with uh, sustainable, uh, substantial input from the AO, the authorization official and the government PMO will determine the specific components that need to be addressed for the regression LBSA. Um, th this could take typically two to six weeks of testing in a uh, NCDSMO um, certified lab, um, depending on the number of severity of defic deficiencies found previously. Uh, the next type of testing is called modular pipeline component testing, which evaluates the modular filters and protocol adapters on the CDS that implements the raise the bar requirements. Prior to any MP 
CT activity, the CDS must be fully successfully, fully uh, uh, completed or a full delta, uh, full or delta LBSA in which the MPC T sub subsystem is evaluated. Uh, rule set testing is focused on evaluation of programmatic based rule sets in which the rule set language is or is nearly turning complete uh, such that for all intents and purposes the rule sets are programs. Uh, since the rule sets are programs, they generally cannot be uh, effectively tested in a site-based security assessment environment. So the next uh, type of testing is a site-based security assessment which is performed at the customer site and conducted by the customer in order uh, in accordance with the uh, CDSE or and the CDS developer. The customer is usually uh, the the customer site is usually the location where the CDS will be operated, but it can also be a staging site or depot site where CDS uh, is confer, uh, configured prior to being deployed or integrated into a weapon system or a sensor. Now the extended S, uh, SBSA uh, basically extends the scope and timeline of the normal SBSA to allow for validation of um, hundreds and thousands of version levels changes to a CDS that can be performed on site rather than at a lab. Um, the final one here is the developer conducted testing, which is performed by the CDS developer at a facility or government uh, PMO location. Uh, so these are type of the testing. There is more information in the security assessment cross domain solution document uh, on the Nipper portal. Um, so um, I will quickly go over all um, the connection process. Um, uh, all CDSs that connect to a C uh, DOD classified network must be compliant according to the DODI uh, 8540.01 uh, mentioned, uh, I mentioned the distant connection process earlier, the process guide. Note that the CDSs connected to the TSSCI or SAP networks may have a different uh, approval process. Your CDS or CDSE can guide you through that specific steps. Um, the NSS commercial solutions for classified program uh, enables commercial products to be used in layered solutions, uh, leveraging industry innovation in order to protect classified national security systems, uh, system data. So there's more information on their website. Um, uh, if you look up the commercial solutions for classified program at the NSA, which uh, for time I will not get into right now. Um, moving on to the connection approval process overview. This chart uh, shows the, the, the different types of um, uh, the process, the phases. Um, on the right side of the chart uh, is a high level description of what is conducted in each phase. So some of the key steps we talked about earlier is mapped here. Uh, in the first phase, you know, the buy, modify and build decision is made. Second phase, the CDS goes through the lab testing process if needed. On the third phase um, is where the site integration and the site-based security assessment is conducted. post activities include site compliance visits, routine patching, annual reaccreditation. We will talk a little bit more about the lifecycle management uh, expectations next. Um, <clears throat> so when the CDS is authorized for operation, a CDS enters the continuous monitoring phase of the RMF. Both the owning organization and the um, authorization official assume responsibility for the security, uh, secure operation management and sustainment of the CDS over its operational life. Key point here is that a CDS is not a black box. You cannot install it and forget about it. Modifications to the CDS may be required to maintain its security posture and or, and or to evolve its uh, capabilities. It's important to patch it regularly for the lifetime of the CDS, actively maintain and enhance the CDS to address new threats, monitor and defend the CDS like it is an IT system. <clears throat> So um, here we have um, listed some of the challenges and risks um, when you're dealing with cross-domain solutions. 
there are several challenges associated with the acquisition and deployment of CDS. Some are highlighted here. Uh, CDSs are connected multiple security domains that have dif different security policies and roles with different approval authorities and processes, which makes it harder to deploy and maintain CDS. To deploy a CDS in your tactical or non-tactical environment, you need to work with, the, with multiple authorization officials, given the complexity. Because of the multiple security domains involved and other operational reasons, it requires a robust physical and cyber defense and risk management plan in place. As we discussed, um, another considerable challenge is that CDS require robust sustainment strategies and a plan on how to maintain the CDS during its lifespan. Because of its criticality, um, CDS requires a special skill set. It is not easy to find people with uh, with the skills needed uh, within the engineering disciplines. <laughs> um, so moving on to the um, uh, risks from a risk perspective, perspective uh, a CDS is a high value target for adversaries. Therefore, it requires a continuous review and assessment of threats and putting in place a robust risk management plan in identifying, assessing, managing, and tracking risks. If a CDS is compromised, it can impact numerous agencies. Therefore, deploying robust CDS with a secure architecture heightens the challenge. Here are some of the general threats we are concerned about. So, supply chain for hardware and software, uh, stealing of data and information, attack from and uh, from and uh, within a specific security domain, always concerned about insider threats. Uh, there's also the potential of an adversary getting access physically or virtually into uh, facilities and cause damage. Equally, we are concerned about the accidental release of data and information. Um, so there's a lot here to consider um, uh, when you're maintaining a uh, uh, cross-domain solution. <clears throat> um, so moving on to uh, the summary, um, cross-domain solutions are required in many complex warfighting environments that have uh, that share information between different secure domains. Educating the engineering committee in the DoD is critical and this will streamline the process uh, with the proper guidance from NCDSMO. Uh, OUSD RNE is working with DAU, NDU, and NDU on a CDS course material, which will help the community get ahead of this knowledge gap and increase the understanding of governing policies and processes. <laughs> And um, this is uh, my last slide. Um, uh, if you think you have your program or project needs a cross-domain solution that can operate within the DoD space, please contact the National Cross-Domain Solution uh, Cross-Domain Strategy and Management Office and CDSMO to ensure a common approach. Uh, here's their contact information. And for the questions about training courses, please reach out to Barhan and I via email. Um, this concludes the material I've prepared for the webinar. Brian? Yeah, no, I th thanks, Dean, and great timing for that, too. Um, five, six minutes here to spare. Um, but as mentioned in the beginning, we're going um, to pass on the, the Q&A portion for today. Um, but instead, it's just to reiterate, if you do have any questions, all the contact information is up on the screen. Um, screenshot it, copy it, paste it, uh, reach out to them uh, with any questions you might have. Um, additionally, the slides are available on the, the, the CSIAC website for this particular webinar. So you can download them and, uh, and get that contact information from there. Um, and then lastly, as another reminder, we are recording this and it will be available um, soon, next few days. So keep an eye out for that. And if there are any other questions for CSI, please don't hesitate to, to let us know. We'd be happy to help with whatever your, whatever cybersecurity related uh, questions you might have. Uh, and so with that, I will conclude it. Thank you, Singy, for the presentation. Very well done. Thanks for everybody for sticking around with us the whole time. Appreciate it. Take care. Thanks, everyone.